I ain't in the mood to do any editing or anything like that. So I'm going to try and keep this raw and uncut because I can't be asked to be honest with you. <clears throat> this is the worst Charlton side I've ever had the displeasure of watching in all my years of being a Charlton fan. This team is worse than the 2016-17 squad that come 13th. It's worse than the team that weren't even a team the year before in the championship. This is the worst. And today was a prime example of that. Today is just <laughs> living proof of that. Lost 3-2 to fucking Malcolm. One of six of the worst League One sides in the league this year. The worst defensive team in the league. And hadn't won a game away from home since November. Of course they were going to beat us today. Of course they were. But fucking come on. How do we go from beating Rotherham and playing well by the sounds of it. To then turning up today at the Valley and put in one of the worst performances I think I've ever seen. The scoreline is insulting to Malcolm. It's insulting to them. It should not have been that close. The scoreline suggests the game was quite close. It fucking was not. It was very kind to us, to be honest. We did not deserve to come away with scoring two goals, you know, and losing a game 3-2. Should have been a lot more than that. That performance today was absolutely disgusting. I'm disgusted by this team and the direction that this club is going in. It just, I, I, I just it, it's it's what we've had all season. It is what we've had all season long. Some people called it at the start. Some people didn't. It's just been an absolute horror show. And today was just another prime example of that. And at this point, I just want just just these next three games. Fuck it. I've gone. I'm going fucking Cambridge on Tuesday. My season ain't even over yet. I'm I'm going Cambridge Tuesday. <laughs> And then I'm going to Shrewsbury on the Saturday home game. And then I'm not going Ipswich. But these next three games can't come any quicker, man. I just want it to end. And I want this entire fucking team. Just get rid of a lot of them. Release the fucking lot of them. Apart from Dobson. And maybe a couple more. I don't know. It's, it's just not good enough. It's not good enough, man. We're 15th in League One for fuck's sake. And yet we're still two points off the top half of the table. Finished still somehow. I don't know how, but we are. <laughs> Genuinely, if we finish 12th, I'll be astounded if we can get top half of the table this year. I'm just disgusted by this team and this club right now. Because it's a fucking disaster. It is a fucking disaster. So... I don't want to talk about the game, but I've, I've got to, in I? So let's just dive straight in, shall we? So one change from the side that beat Rotherham. Connor Washington was on the bench because he's having his minutes managed, which I think is a bollocks excuse, to be honest. There's three games left of the season. Four, including this one before. Managing his minutes. Season's fucking over. He ain't got a fucking knock, has he? Why is he on the bench? And then Mason Burstow's in the side. I don't know why we still bother with Burstow, to be honest. What's the point in starting him? Like, the guy, he's leaving at the end of the season. And we may as well give some of our other boys a go. You know, like Daniel Carnu or fucking Tyrese Campbell or Miles Lieber. And may as well give them a shot. What's the point in playing Burstow? I still think even now, you know, we've robbed Chelsea big time. People, people can sit there and whinge all they want. Back in January, you know, about Burstow leaving for 1.7 million. We fucking ripped Chelsea off with that deal. We're lucky to get seven figures for a player of Burstow's calibre. Very lucky. So I'll, I'll, I'll give Sam God a round of applause for that one. That's a great bit of business. The fact we're selling him for 1.7 million. Fucking hell. But anyway, yeah, that was the team. So it was unchanged. McGillivray in goal, back five as per fucking usual. Matthews, right wing back, Claire, Pierce, Famwo, Blackett, Taylor, Dobbo, Morgan, Gilby, and then Stockley and Burstow. And then on the bench, there was only one defender, Ben Purrington. The rest of them were um, attacking substitutions, obviously, apart from Nathan Harness. I think we had, we had Connor, we had DJ, we had uh, Leko, we had Nikkei. 
And there was one over that escaped my mind. Um, I, I can't, I can't think. I don't really care to be honest. But um, yeah, rather attacking bench, which I didn't mind to be honest. A lot of options off the bench. Forster Kasky, that was it. There you go, Jay Forster Kasky. That was the other one. Um, but yeah, a lot of options off the bench, I felt, if things went wrong. Obviously, one defender did kind of mm, me a little bit, you know, with our defensive record lately, our disciplinary record, you know, in events someone gets injured or sent off, God forbid, you know, we've only got one defender and that's Ben Purrington. But yeah, um, so let's just let's talk about the game, shall we? Fuck me. I'm still having flashbacks of that, of just the game now, you know, I just want to get it out of my head, but it's just... I I think that's I think that might be on par with one of the worst performances I've seen this season. Maybe the worst. It was genuinely that bad. Like it it, it really was. Like it, the first half was just a classic Charlton game. It is a classic Charlton game. How many times over the years do we start games so brightly over twenty minutes and don't take advantage? Honestly, Morecambe were there for the taking in the first twenty minutes. So it seemed. You know, Blackett Taylor looked lively. He's darting about the place, getting about, you know. We had shots blocked. Blackett Taylor fired one across goal and went wide. You know, I think Stockley blazed one over the bar, you know. We were coming at him. You know, we're playing some really good football. We're knocking it about. Matthews is taking on his men. Same with CBT. Dobbo's getting stuck in, you know. We're moving the ball nicely. It's the classic Cholton thing. Every 20 minutes into a game, we start strong, we don't take advantage, we don't score, we have no end products, and then we know what's going to happen. They're going to score with one of their first attacks of the game. That's exactly what they did. You know, we have that 20-minute spell, then we go flat, we don't take advantage, well, we don't take advantage of it, and then it goes flat. And then it just it just let them in the game, and just they just commanded the game from then on, really. You know, they're coming forward, they're having shots, you know, Stockton... Their, you know, main key figure, you know, we're trying to keep him quiet. He's headed one over the bar, you know, he's fired one wide to not very good efforts. But, you know, they're growing into the game and you had, you could just look at that and just think, yeah, Stockton's going to score. That's exactly what he did. He opened the scoring. Ball comes over on the right hand side. No one even bothers to pick it out or even tries to stick a foot in and stop the cross. Stockton pokes it in, off the post and in. Goal. Easy. Embarrassing goal to give away. And the second one was just as embarrassing. The second one was just as just as bad. Arthur Nahuar, Nahuar, I've no fucking clue how you say his name. I don't care to be honest with you. Like no one even bothered trying to close him down. He gets a shot away, bottom corner. Too fucking easy. Two of the most, two of the easiest goals Morecambe are going to score all season or have scored all season. It's embarrassing. It's two shocking goals to give away. Our defence. How do we play five at the back and our defending is still. Shit, it's still embarrassing. It's dire. It has been all season. Now, how do we do that? I, I still don't know how we do it, even over the years, you know. How do we still do it? Fucking, we have a bright patch, you know. 20 minutes in, we don't take advantage with no end products. And then they go down the other end moments later with one of their first opportunities of the game, the first decent opportunities of the game, and they fucking take them. I'm sick of it. I'm sick to death of it. Yeah, you know, McGillivray being called into action a couple of times before the two goals, made two good saves. The only things he's good at, to be honest with you, are good shot stopper, but that's about it. And then Stockton gets an easy goal, you know, pulled back in the box, no one even near the person who crossed the ball in the box, Greg Lee, or Stockton who put it away. And then the second one was just embarrassing. No one even bothered trying to close their man down. And that was half time, 2 0 down. Embarrassing. You know, I've, I've said it, I don't need to say any more. You know, we start well and then we don't take advantage and then they fucking bag two out of nowhere because our defence is a shambles. The midfield was non-existent. It was all right, I guess, in the 20-minute exchanges at the start of the game, but then it just went nothing. And then the strikers barely got any service because we just punted the fucking ball long. No idea. We had a couple of opportunities after we had the second shot. Dobbo, I think, hit one on the volley or it was either him or Morgan, I don't know, or Gilby, I don't know. Either way, the keeper managed to save it. And then Burstow tried to hook a shot over his head, which went over the bar. Stockley tried another overhead kick, which was blocked. I don't know why he keeps trying to do it, because it doesn't come off. He's tried it three times this season. I've seen him try it three times. It's not fucking worked either way. Each time it's not worked. One of them, he completely missed kicks. The other one was saved at Wimbledon. So that was an all right try, I guess. This one blocked. Stop doing it. It's not coming off. 
And then the second half rolls around, no changes as per usual, and no system change. I don't know what Jackson sees in that five at the back, honestly. I've said this so many times in previous videos. I don't know what he sees in that system. It don't work. It does not work. There is no plan B with Jackson. There is no plan B. You can't sit there and tell me after that first half, yeah, I'm not going to make any substitutions. We're just going to carry on as we were, guys. You can't tell me that. You can't. It's embarrassing and it is not fun to watch because the system don't fucking work. Eventually, we do make changes. Alex Gilby comes off. What the fuck did he do today? Fuck all. Washington comes off. Don't even remember him being on the pitch, to be honest with you. Washington came on. He played the best part of about, what, 30, 35, 40 minutes? Probably, probably 35, 40 minutes. Didn't even know he was on the pitch. Barely saw him. Barely got involved in the game, to be honest. Forster Kasky came on for um, Morgan. Yeah, yeah, Morgan. Um, Morgan didn't do a lot either, to be honest. And then uh, Bursto came off and uh, we brought on Anike. And uh, Anike's first game back since uh, February from injury. Um, yeah, I guess the second half started bright. I guess, you know, Stockley managed to find a back in the net. It's 12th for the season. I can't remember um, how the move initially started, but I know Bursto had a head, um, well, headed it towards goal. I think the fans sort of celebrated like it was going in as Burstow's goal, but Stockley comes flying in and he's able to tap it in for his goal. Um, I think if Stockley would have left it, I think Burstow would have scored anyway. I can't remember if there was a defender coming in to challenge Stockley or not. I don't know. But anyway, Stockley made sure of it, went in the back of the net, and that sort of obviously uplifted the fans a little bit. Well, massively, actually. You know, we kept chanting throughout the... the um, kept chanting throughout uh, the exchanges between Stockley's goal and Morecambe's third, which we'll get onto in a second. But during that period, it was just like, just constantly crossing the ball, you know, not getting anywhere. No one getting hold of the ball in terms of heading anything. Stockley barely won a header today. You know, like Matthews couldn't cross a ball in to save his life. No one could. I'm convinced the majority of our players couldn't cross a fucking road, let alone cross a ball. Do you know what I mean? Like, we could have crossed the ball into the box until next Thursday and we still wouldn't have found a way to score enough goals to get a draw out of the game, let alone a fucking win. Anyway, yeah, the fact the fans, they get all excited. You know, we're, we're trying to rally the troops up and then... Craig McGillivray catches the ball, throws it across the bot, throws it across the pitch, intercept the ball, comes out to Ganua, I don't know how you say his fucking name, slams it in the back of the net for three one. Well done, Craig. Well fucking done. I told you, shot stopping. That's all he has. He can't command his box. He barely comes to for crosses and catches the ball. You know, and and, and that is just, it's so poor. Like you've got time to boot the ball up the pitch for fuck's sake. It's two one. Why are you throwing it out to? I don't know. It's just just giving them a goal and, that, and that's just game over in it at that stage. You're just giving them a fucking goal at that point. And then the rest of the the rest of it was just so frustrating to watch. Honestly, I was just getting so pissed off just watching it because it was just the same, the same from the moment they bagged the third goal until we scored the second of our match, and then it was just the exact same, you know sideways, backwards, fucking sideways ball, switching the play constantly between either side, between Blackett, Taylor and Matthews and Forster Kasky, whoever it was, switching the play constantly, sideways, backwards. Whenever we had a free kick, we'd go backwards. And then eventually when we tried to think, oh, I better cross the ball in the box here, overshoots it, goes out for a goal kick or a throw or whatever, they intercept the ball, goes all the way down our far end, you know, it's just... It's just, it's, it's, it was fucking shit. That's, that's why I'm saying it's one of the worst performances I've seen because we just looked so uninspiring, so lethargic. We didn't look like we were bothered. You know, just we didn't offer each other anything. We didn't give each other an option. Like I said, just sideways, backwards, switching the play. How many times did we spray a ball over to Matthews and their left back just constantly headed it away? How many times? I counted at least three or four. It's a fucking joke. You know, eventually we would get forward. We put balls into the box. And EK, when he came on, he had one where he's on the edge of the area, completely unmarked, completely misses the ball. His touch was absolutely shocking. But eventually, it was him who got the second goal. Blackett Taylor, who I felt was one of our better performances. I dare go and say he was our best player on a pitch alongside Dobson. I thought Forster Kasky was all right as well when he came on. 
Anyway, ball comes into the box from Blackett Taylor. Anike wins the header. It is a good header, to be fair. Beats Carson. Goal 3 2. Again, the fans rally up again. Obviously, trying to get behind them, same as we were when we went. Uh, when we uh, went 2-1, when Stockley scored, you know, again, chanting away. And once again, we very, 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 very nearly grabbed an equaliser through George Dobson. A brilliant turn at the uh, the left post. And, uh, yeah, blasted a shot over the bar. Really unlucky from Dobson. Um, could have been a different story had we uh, yeah, grabbed an equaliser. To be fair, that probably would have been the biggest robbery of a point in history. <sighs> Yeah, that's how the game ended. Charlton Athletic 2, Morecambe 3. We lost to the worst defensive team in the division and a side that have not won away from home since November. It was going to happen, wasn't it? Like, you, you, you could just call it. You could tell which side had to play for something today. And to be fair to Morecambe, I've got to you know, say hats off to them. You know? like, they've got something to play for. They've got to stay in this league and that's fair enough to them. You know, Fair play, they got the win. Well done, they deserved it. That's all the good words I'm going to fucking say about you lot because I just want to focus on how shit Mark team is. How, you, how are you conceding three goals at home to the worst defensive team in the division? One of the worst teams in the league this season. How are you doing that? Like I said, just just we need a big, big pre-season clean-out. We need to be very harsh in this summer. You know, I, there is there is genuinely not a lot of players in this squad that I would care if they left. I, I, honestly, I'm just so uninspired by all of them, apart from a select few. I'm disgusted by this team. I am. I am well and truly disgusted by what I've seen this season. It is a fucking embarrassment. I don't like the direction this club is going. Not a massive fan of the way it's being run and some of the decisions that have been made by the things at the top. Why did I say things at the top? The people at the top. Our recruitment. Fucking need a good look at that, don't we? Our team is a shambles. A lot of these lot need to pack their bags and go. And then Johnny Jackson as well. I love the guy. Club legend. There's an element of me that would like to see what he can do over the summer and build the team that he wants because there is the argument that he's inherited a different manager's squad which I can kind of understand. But then again, I said it after the Wimbledon game. I'm not convinced. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I'm not inspired by Jackson. And I'm, I'm afraid there is a very big decision that needs to be made by the people at the top as to whether Jackson actually deserves the chance to get next season. Because can you really sit there and say that he does deserve it? Because, to be honest with you, a large part of me thinks that he doesn't deserve it. There's a massive decision to be made with Jacko, I'm afraid. There's no plan B. He sticks with the five at the back. It doesn't work. There's no plan B. He shows no sort of like desire to change it. He can't get this team up and going and raring to go for anything. Like, I feel a lot of people will struggle to admit that, but I'm not convinced by Jackson. Like I said, I love the guy. Cholton legend, but I'm not convinced. And, uh, yeah, it's going to take a lot to convince me otherwise. <laughs> but just get this season over and done with, man, honestly. Just get these next three games done. Be very brutal in the summer window. Get rid of a lot of these players. You know, and just adopt a strategy that works, you know. Just be ruthless in the transfer window, you know. Bring in good quality players that are going to help us get promoted, you know. We keep saying next year's going to be our year. I don't think it will be at this point in time. And I think Sangard will be very lucky if he gets five digits come into the Valley next season. You know? Because I, I I think I'm going to wait it out for my for renewing my season tickets. I want to see what we do over the summer before thinking about renewing. Because I can't justify spending my money on this club. Because there's better things to spend my money on, to be honest with you. You can have a go at me all you want in the comments for that, but I don't give a shit, to be honest. I, I, I can't justify it after seeing this this season. So, yeah, that's the way this video is going to end. I'm quite surprised I managed to keep this raw and uncut. Like I said, I can't be asked to do any sort of editing, so this is just going to go straight on YouTube right now. So, thanks for watching another episode of these rants that I like to do over the course of this season. I hope you did enjoy 
I'm just tired. I, 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 feel, I feel hurt and disgusted and let down by the club and the team this season, you know. Like I said, released a fucking lot of these players apart from a couple of them. Like, I, and, and, I, and I mean a couple of them. Like I said, we need to be very brutal in this transfer window and get rid of a lot of these boys. And serious question marks do need to be raised about Jackson. I'm not convinced by him. I'm not. Sorry to say it, but I'm not. So, yeah. That's it. 3 2 defeat to Malcolm. Embarrassing performance and result. See you all at Cambridge if you're dumb enough to make the trip up there, like myself. I don't know why I'm doing it. I love this club too much, clearly. So, yeah. I'll see you all for a match reaction for that game. Thanks again for watching this calamity of a video. This has been Tyler Rollington. Have a nice day, and I'll see you all then. Take it easy. Stay safe. See you later.